So we've got the Arrhenius equation, and it's an exponential equation. And although we can plot it, it turns out that humans are really lousy at looking at a line and saying, is it anything other than straight? And so that means that most of the time when we're testing these equations or we're trying to graph um, in order to tease out something, we want to convert it to a linear form. In fact, I'm a physical chemist, and some people have joked that our job is just to change every equation to something that looks like y equals mx plus b. Um, so what are the things that we can do here? Well, first of all, um, we can measure k, and we can control t. And so it suggests that we should be plotting something to do with k on the y-axis and something to do with t on the x-axis. And typically in science, since we can control t, we plot it on the x-axis, and since we measure k, we plot it on the y-axis, and that's pretty typical. The thing we control, we put on the horizontal. The thing we measure, we put on the vertical. Um, let's turn this into an equation for a straight line, and since we've got a e term, we might think about natural logarithms, and the idea behind the natural logarithm is that e to the power is the anti-natural logarithm. And of course, if we log both sides, okay, we won't have changed the equation. Well, at least the equal sign still applies. Y log both sides. Well, if you look at the right-hand side now, uh, now we've got a sort of a log um, A times B kind of deal going on. And one cool thing about logarithms, in fact, one of the reasons they were invented was to make, to make this kind of problem easy to solve. And so the log of one thing times another is the log of the first thing plus the log of the second thing. Now, the second thing here, you've got the log of an anti-log, and so they vanish in a puff of smoke. And so that just gives us minus Ea over Rt. In fact, let me go ahead and separate the, the t and um, we can go ahead and write in the left-hand side again. So why does this look so cool? Well, let me just kind of move things around here. So I've got natural log of the rate constant, the thing I can measure, equals um, minus the activation energy over the ideal gas constant uh, times by 1 over the temperature. Ha, huh, I can control that. Uh, plus the natural logarithm of A, our pre-exponential factor. So this is our favorite thing in the world. This is a Y equals MX plus B equation. If we plot the natural logarithm of the rate constant on the X-axis, I'm sorry, the Y-axis, and we plot the reciprocal of the temperature on the X-axis, if the Arrhenius equation is correct, which is pretty damn good, actually, then that means that we will have a slope of minus the activation energy over R and a y-intercept of natural log of pre-exponential factor. So let's go ahead and graph this out. And uh, so here we have natural log of the rate constant and the reciprocal of temperature. And which way is our plot going to slope? Uh, well, the activation energy is always positive, so it's the height of the barrier, so you can't have a negative height, not for a barrier anyway, it's called a ditch otherwise. The gas constant we know is positive, and so we know this whole term must be negative, which means that our data will slope in a downward fashion. And so if we measure rate constants at differing temperatures and we calculate the log, of k and the reciprocal of t and we plot it on an xy plot, we should have something that looks like this. If our Arrhenius equation is awesome, then we will see a straight line. And what can we get out of this? Well, we can measure the slope, rise over run. We need at least two data points to do this. Obviously, the more we have, the better it's going to be. And if you know some stats, you can do some linear regression. You can calculate the slope with a TI-30. You can even get the error in the slope or the standard deviation in the slope if you want to. 
So the slope is equal to minus the activation energy over R. So if we want to find the activation energy, we can just manipulate this. So the activation energy is just equal minus the gas constant times by the slope. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Remember, the activation energy is one of the key things we need to know about any reaction. It tells us the barrier. It tells us how flippin' hard it is to go from being a reactant to a product. Okay, what's the other thing we can figure out here? Well, honestly, I can't say this is terribly useful, but we should probably go ahead and talk about it anyway. And that is the y-intercept. The y-intercept, okay corresponds to the natural logarithm of our pre-exponential factor. So that's telling us something about how many collisions per second, and it also actually tells us how many of those collisions actually have the right orientation of molecules. We might talk about that later. So those are really the two things we want to get out of this kind of plot. Um, the activation energy coming from the slope times by minus r, and the pre-exponential factor, or the natural log of it, coming from the y-intercept. In fact, we normally refer to this as an Arrhenius plot. Now, this is one of those things that on an exam, if you see natural log of k versus 1 over t, you just have to know that this is a plot used to find the activation energy.